Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Kerrville Weekly News Roundup, hosted by the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network and featuring myself and Mr. Tom Fox and Gilbert Pies' absence today, but we are the founders of the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network, where we take our top picks for news for the week. And it's St. Patty's Day. We're both wearing green. We're being festive today in spirit of St. Patty's Day. So uh, let's let's kick it off. Tom, you want to you want to start us off here? Well, uh, we're both Irish today. Yes. So, yeah, Touché. unfortunately, we had a, a, a tragic event uh, Sunday in Kerrville where a house fire uh, injured seven pets and killed one. And what I really wanted to do with this story, Andrew, was remind people that hopefully you have a uh, escape plan if your house is on fire, if you get caught in the middle of the night. Uh, but think about your pets. And do you have older pets? Are they upstairs with you? If so, how are you going to get them downstairs? If you have more than one pet, are you going to try and get one in each arm? And just think about the, your escape plan for your pets. Because however terrified you're going to be, they're going to be exponentially more terrified. And they're not going to have the ability for rational thought if there's a fire. Uh, so please, uh, you know, it's obviously tragic when any pet dies, but um, I just thought thought about that a lot. We have an old dog that sleeps upstairs uh, with my wife and I uh, in the same bedroom, and we were wondering how on earth we'd haul down a 120-pound German Shepherd uh, down the stairs if we had to. So uh, think about that and um, just uh, be prepared. Uh, the other thing I'd like to do is um, there was an obituary that really struck me, a fellow named Leonard Jeffrey. And he was 98 when he passed away on March 6th. And I just want to celebrate uh, Leonard Jeffrey, his life well lived. We have so many unique people here in the Hill Country. He served in World War II. Uh, he attended both Texas A&M and Rice University. Uh, served in the Navy uh, during the war, came out, worked with Gulf Refining um, and later Texaco. Uh, lived all over the world, uh, retired here to Kerrville some 30 years ago, and it's been a rancher with he and his wife since that time. And it just struck me that we have, uh, because of the nature of our community, obviously we have an older community, but we have some great stories here. And I know you and I are trying to, to tell some of those in our podcast, but uh, Leonard Jeffrey's story really struck me. He's uh, He was a couple of years or one year older than my father, who's who's left us as well. Um, but he, uh, he really had a life well lived and I'm glad he made it to Kerrville, uh, and, uh, condolences, uh, to his family as well. So those were really the two stories I wanted to, to highlight. How about you, Andrew? Yeah. And I, I'm glad that you covered that for Mr. Jeffrey there. I think that you're right. And we just, matter of fact, we just, we just finished interviewing a, another author for the Hill Country Authors podcast right before this. And it's just, I think the stories that are here that, you know, they don't get media attention like a lot of the other stuff out there in mainstream media nowadays. And I think it's an important job. As well. That's why we're trying to highlight some of those stories of the people that live right here in our backyard. So for uh, my news picks this week, uh, first and foremost, I wanted to mention the Museum of Western Art, which my wife and I have the fortunate pleasure of living right down the road from. I pass it every morning on my way to work. They have they have two statues now in their possession. It's They're on loan from the city. They were donated by a, uh, a wealthy man here that is, uh, has passed since, but left these two large bronze statues to the city of Kerrville. And then the city of Kerrville, in turn, has loaned them to the Museum of Western Art. And if you go to, this was the article in the Daily Times. This is just straight off their website, thedailytimes.com, um, for Kerrville. This is uh, the story, and I believe it's it's not behind their, their paywall, so you can access this for free, or I was able to access it for free. And there's a picture of one of them right there. And then there's a, and I think this is the, that's not the statue that I was thinking of that I can see on my drive here out of the neighborhood that we live in on my way to work. The other one is, is a very interesting bronze statue as well. It's a, a cowboy kneeling next to his horse, and that one's called Thank You for the Rain. So great article there in the Daily Times about that. And uh, just beautiful pieces of artwork there that the Museum of Western History is is uh, keeping for the for the time being for the city of Kerrville. So, and you can also find a lot of information too for, for to that point uh, about the Museum of Western Art that's right here in Kerrville, right next to the Bandera Highway entrance of River Hill. 
uh, wonderful, wonderful museum if you have not checked that out. And they always have events and cool things going on over there. So that was one. The other one that I wanted to mention was the award that Peterson Hospital um, or Healthcare System won recently. And it was an Outstanding Patient Experience Award. It was the top 10. They were in the top 10 for the seventh year in a row for that award. And they were number six out of 523 hospitals. And I thought that was worth mentioning. You know, they're, the, they're Kerrville's largest employer. They, they have a huge economic Im impact on our local community here and are filled with wonderful folks that do a great job of keeping the healthcare system alive and well here in, in Kerrville and right here in our backyard. So, um, so that's just, that's, that's it for me as far as the news articles. What, uh, what do you got going on this weekend, Tom? What you well, got planned? Uh, I had planned to park my butt in front of the television for more March Madness. March Madness. <laughs> that's right. But after day one, where I picked correctly two of eight and have blown my bracket, uh, <laughs> I probably don't need to be uh, in front of the TV as much as I had thought I was going to. Throwing stuff at the TV. The uh, the horns won, so I'm uh, still behind the horns in their play again Saturday uh, to make it into the Elite or the Sweet 16. So I'm going to definitely watch that. You know, those Aggies, of course, lost their first round game. Pathetic. <laughs> uh, just classic Aggies. So the much vaunted matchup between A&M and Texas will not occur because once again, A&M lost their uh, first round game. So, uh, but they mean to have more time. And uh, I want to pick up on uh, one um, thing that's happening this weekend. A lady named uh, Peg Sunberg, who writes under the name Cowgirl Peg, is having a book signing at our Museum of Western Art. And Daryl found out about her book, Daryl Beecham, the uh, executive director, and asked her to come down for a, uh, a book signing. And the book is Cruise on Cruiser. And it's The Amazing Lives of a Blind Dog. And uh, this is uh, uh, not the first book from Peg, uh, but she's written multiple books on animals. Uh, she's born and raised in Texas and is now a Hill Country resident. I hope to have her one day soon on the Hill Country Authors Podcast. But she's doing a book signing uh, at the Museum of Western Art. So check that out on Saturday. And then Sunday, if you want to go in a different direction, a pianist, Rob Landis, is playing the music of George Gershwin at, uh, or in Fredericksburg, rather, at the Fredericksburg United Methodist Church. Um, Gershwin is always great. Uh, I am interested to see him via piano. Uh, the songs we'll all recognize, but uh, I'm really in intrigued to see uh, Rob Landis and what he can do with Gershwin on a piano. So those are my uh, two events. And for those of you who still have a bracket, you know, good luck. Uh, uh -huh. U of H has not lost as of the uh, recording of this podcast. So maybe those of us who picked U of H all the way to the finals and to win, maybe we'll get somewhere. But if you picked uh, University of Virginia or... Um, any of the other brackets that got busted, uh, you're in the bag with me. <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to enjoy March Madness, but not have a bracket and not have not have skin in the game. So I can watch with enjoyment. So I'm part I'm impartial to who wins or loses. So but I will be watching some of that this weekend. But I am focused on going to we're having an outing tonight with me, my wife, my cousin, and his wife. We're going to the Arcadia Theater to see a local band play there that we've seen before. They do a great job and put on a great show. And I think all things St. Patty's Day. So uh, other than that, I have my folks coming in from East Texas this weekend. So my mom and stepdad will be here and we'll be entertaining them at our house this weekend. But uh, yeah, we're trying to live up to St. Patty, Patty's Day. I can't even talk. St. Patty's Day spirit. So uh, and I think that'll do it for us. Any closing thoughts before we part for the weekend? Tom? Yes, it is supposed to snow in Kerrville tomorrow, March 18th. First of all, let me just tell the weather guys. Yeah, what is that? That is totally unacceptable. I do not <laughs> accept snowfall in Kerrville, Texas on March 18th. That's why your bracket got busted. That must be it. <laughs> uh, but if it does snow, be safe out there tomorrow morning. If you don't have to go somewhere, don't. Uh, if you need some supplies now, I'm headed to the grocery store to buy some milk and some breakfast food and maybe some fruit um, for tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be warmer in the afternoon. I'm sure it'll melt away. But I, I don't know about you, but I find it totally unacceptable for it snow. Just, it doesn't make sense. A freeze 
on March 18th. So yeah. be safe out there. All right, guys, that'll do it for us from the Kerrville Weekly News Roundup with the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network. You guys take care, stay safe, and have a wonderful St. Patty's Day weekend.